So this is like part six of the Menace Amiga format series. I'm doing quite a lot on this now. We've managed to get this working. It works on the A1200. It got the start up and shutdown working. Got rid of all this corruption that you can see here. Um, so it works pretty well. But this version that came with Amiga formats on the cover discs wasn't actually a finished version. It doesn't have any sound effects. Doesn't have any music. Doesn't have the scoreboard printing. Doesn't have the main menus. So I thought we'd start putting some stuff in here and see what we can do. And I thought the first thing to go at might be to put some music in. Uh, because what I was thinking of doing is taking this, the uh, PT player from Frank Willy. And yeah, look at that. It was updated 2024 June. So that's that's not that long ago. It's like a few months ago. So yeah, this is used in the Amiga test kit, um, this player. So it can play ProTracker modules. So I thought it might be worth downloading this and see if we can integrate this into the source code and get some music back into the game because apparently this also supports external sound effects so I think it'd be worth putting this in before we put the sound effects in because it's got no sound effects as well um, yeah and this is this I've not tried in uh, integrating anything like this and yeah it goes through how to get it working so maybe we can get this compiled into Menace somehow there's a lot of documentation there look at all this whoa um, so I haven't read much of that really but I'm going to download this, uh, which is an LHA module, and unpack it on the Amiga, and we'll see if what we can do is where's the what does it say? How to use by default PT player uh, .sm assembles into a single code section. The player routine set up local base registers to access data. This requires a working RS directive, which yeah, DivPack can do. By defining S data symbol, PT player assembles into a code section and a small data section called merged. All player routines expect that the base register A4 is set up with the small data base pointer. I don't know what any of this really means. I, I can I kind of know what they're going on about with these sections, but I don't know what the rest of it is. Well, let's just see if we can get it in there. Let's see if we can even get it to compile. Let's get this LHA onto the Amiga. So I've just copied that. LHA onto the Amiga itself. I'll do a new shell here. It's in this. Where is it? It's in PT Player in here. Uh, there it is. PT Player LHA. So how do I un LHA this? PT Player. Do just do it like that. No, can't remember. Yeah, I don't actually understand how to use this program. Is it E and X? <laughs> I couldn't find the option for X. I don't know what it what's going on. X. No files extracted. Is this actual archive corrupt or something? It is. It's actually corrupt. It says it's zero bytes. Let me download it again. Right, here we are. There's my LHA, LHA extract PT player, and I want to extract it to here. I don't know what the command is for the current folder that you're in, but that should do it. There we go. It was just, it was actually a zero byte archive, but it didn't just, it didn't tell me that there was nothing in it. There's the files, got them. Wow, that was a bit of a chore, wasn't it? Here's the readme, and this is just what we were looking at before. So what's the H file for? Is that for C? Oh, that is a C version of it. Uh, let's keep the license with it. Here we go. Let's move those in there. Okay, let's boot up DevPack. And let's just open that file and just see what it see what's in it. Here it is. So these are all the things that I can call, is it? Yeah. So I'd have to jump to subroutines on these, maybe. Is that what these are? Okay, it seems well documented. Oh, wow, there's so much stuff going on here. Oh, and it's got its own little things here. That could be a problem. Because these are already defined. Wow, it's got the whole lot. Right, well, whew. does this assemble even? Hey, it does actually assemble on its own. That's pretty good. That's a good start. The question is, can it assemble if I put it into Menace? So I think I read somewhere it recommended sticking it at the end, but there's an end there. I don't know if that's the end of the file. 
so it's just pt player dot asm let's see what happens if we do that i have no hope in this assembly oops wow that actually assembled i'm finding that hard to believe i wonder if that's because it's past the end directive what does the end directive do does that say don't compile anything past there if i just put garbage at the end of here does that not does that still compile because that was surprising that, that actually worked yeah that's not doing anything is it i suspect it's got to go at the end of here let's put it right at the end of the program just let's just to see if it'll assemble i think this is going to produce loads of errors yeah i thought that was going to happen simple to find twice because i've already got those i've already got those defined all these LVO things are already defined when I include them. So I think what I'll do now, let's open the actual PT player. And I think, yeah, the first thing I noticed was that that was not going to work. These have already been defined by Menace. So we don't need to define them again. Is that all I need to get it to assemble? There's probably a few more in there, is there? Ah, that was it. And let's just see. Right, okay, we we don't have sound, obviously, because I've not put any sound in yet, but I've assembled the actual sound routines in there, and it only required a slight modification to get that to work. So that's a good start. I've got an actual player. So I, what I need to do now is load a module and then try and get it to start. Oh, look at that. I've got a bit of corruption up there. That's interesting. I thought we'd fixed our graphical corruption, but I just got a bit... Maybe we didn't fix all of it. So I'm going to need a mod to play. Now, I did actually try ripping the Menace music out of the game itself using WinUAE, but it doesn't actually work in Menace. It, it, it gets the sound effects, but it doesn't actually get the mod. So I'm going to go on Mod Archive and have a look for something. Let's look in um, Top Favourites. Let's have a look. So some of these are really good. Um, I just want something that I can play for now. It's got to be a .mod file, because I think that's the Pro Tracker mod, isn't it? We could put Space Debris in, but it's like 300 kilobytes or something. Yeah, it's like 339 kilobytes. You can see why they wouldn't have used something like this back in the day, because it would it would have just like taken up all of the memory. Need something a little bit smaller. 126 kilobytes. So let's uh, let's try this one, Elysium.mod. Who's this one by? I mean, this won't be permanent, but I'll just put this one in Jester. So let's stick this one in and we'll replace it with something else later. We'll have to try and get the original Menace music somehow. I don't have it and it was never included with the Amiga format stuff. So for now, I'm just going to dump that in the main folder with all the rest of the files. They're not in actual folders at the moment now because we still don't have any loading routines either it does it could load files before it shuts down the system but it doesn't do that um let's just include this right at the top here so what i'm going to do is create a new section and you can call these whatever they want so we'll call this music and I, and i think i want data c which according to the manual that means that's a chip memory data section so when it's all linked together that's what that's going to mean it means that nothing in in this section could be executable and it has to be in chip memory we'll give it a name um let's just call it level music and we are gonna include binary file and it's gonna be uh elysium dot mod that's my level music <laughs> so let's just see if that actually still assembles i wish i knew what the shortcut for assemble was is it mega a i'm not sure so i think my executable should get a lot bigger here error garbage oh there's garbage there what's this did i accidentally put that in put garbage in the file at least i know it's assembling it i think should just be a lot bigger there you go look 280 eight thousand bytes which is much bigger than it was before this this music file is dwarfing the rest of the game let's just see if it still runs the answer is no oh no uh oh 
So just including that 126 kilobyte mod has broken everything. I wonder if this is because we need an even there. Let's just try that. Oh dear. It's actually rebooting when it does that. Okay, let's try again. Let's stick this at the end, see if it makes any difference. So I've put that at the end of the executable. That's not doing it. That didn't include that because it's not the right size. Again, if I just put like an error in here, is this where devpack is behaving strangely? Yeah, it's not putting that in at all. It's not assembling this file. Yeah, look, it's just not assembling it. I don't know if there's some kind of bug in there or something like that. But if I shut this program down, no, that's not doing anything. I don't understand why can't it assemble it down there. It can't put it after this, but if I put it here, it's fine, but it doesn't work. Let's try and find a small mod because I don't know if it's just the size of it is making this thing not work. Yeah, so I'm just going to see if I can find a tiny mod and I've, I've just to get a smaller one and I found this tiny mod one. It's five kilobytes. So let's give this one a go instead because I don't know what's going on. I don't know why it's crashing it. Right, let's see if it can do any better with that. It's a five kilobyte mod. I'm not even trying to initialize anything yet. I'm just trying, oh, there you go. I can see it's a bit bigger than it would normally be. Does it still run? No, it does not. So just the act of adding that mod is breaking it. I don't know why. Something weird about the way it's assembling this. So does a section, oh, does a section have to have an end? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing here, but maybe you have to have end for end section there. I'm not sure. Whoa, no, that's not what you do. So it just assembled that, included that, and then stopped the assembly. So that's not what you do, because that is, <laughs> there it is, it's five kilobytes. So end, there's no end section. You just start a new one. So I, I don't understand why including that just breaks everything because there is a there are some more binaries included in this let's have a look so whoops try ah that's what i'm doing i'm doing paste and paste control oh is it because i did a local section as well let's get rid of this section stuff because this is in chip ram anyway let's just include it next to these other binary files and i, and I don't really understand why it's bad. Let's try again. Well, it's in there. Let's see if we can run it without crashing. We can. So I don't know what I'm doing, let's face it. I including that in a section at the start just breaks the whole thing. But putting it down there in the code section didn't. Well, it's in there. I've got a mod file in there anyway. So that's a start. Right, now we need the instructions. Install a level six interrupt handler for CIA B time interrupts by calling M underscore MT install. Do this once. Uh, we need to shut down the system first. After take system. And we can probably do it here. So let's just say we want to do a branch of subroutine MT install. Right, what's the bet that this just doesn't work? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, it doesn't say it needs anything else. We can probably look in the PT player thing to have a look at that. Is that going to do anything? Error data too large. Data too large? Why would that be? Is that because it's too far away in the program? Because you can only branch to a subroutine that's a certain distance away? Main difference between BSR and JSR is the memory processing time. The BSR instruction is similar to BRA in that you have two different sizes for short sure and for word. Maximum of bytes you can branch forward is 7E for branch uh, 
short. Maximum you can branch backward is 80. So my 68,000 is really rusty. It's been like 30 years. You've got to give me an excuse. But I'd completely forgotten that um, branch to subroutine is different to jump to subroutine because branch can only go a certain distance. But jump to sub subroutine can go any distance in the program because it's not, I think it's just jumping to a specific memory address run the program counter offset, I think. Uh, I don't know. But I can just call jump to subroutine. I think that's the way to do it instead of branch to subroutine and that'll fix it for me. Yeah, basically the music in it will, well, I've just called it there. I mean, th this is running and I've actually got the hardware hardware chip register address in, in A6 there, which is what it wants anyway. So it makes sense to call this right here, I think. Um, let's just see what else I've got to do. Install level six interrupt handler by calling empty install. Do this once during program init. I've done that. For every new mod file to play, initialize it with empty init. Most common case is to pass a pointer to the mod in A0. Let's just do that right now. Um, empty init. And it needs a pointer to the mod in A0. What was the name of my level music? I think that was right. And set A1 and D0, A1 and D0 to zero. Don't know what D0 is. A1, and I don't know what A1 is either. So that's the mod start location pattern zero. And A1 is the pointer to the samples, apparently, which is also null because we don't have any pointers to samples. Let's just see if that assembles and let's see if the game runs. It won't play anything yet because I've not told it to start the mod, but it assembled. And does it run? No, it crashed. <laughs> nope. So empty and it did not like what it was what was happening there. Did not like. Well, let's find out what went wrong. Let's cut that. Let's just put it here. Oh, the other possibility is that it screwed up some of the things that were in some of the registers. Is that possible? It was, the init was alright, but install was alright, but the I think once I did this let's just get rid of that for a second. Once I did the empty init, we were screwed. Is that gonna run? Okay, so that works. So once I've called empty init, I'm done. So I'll have a quick look at what that does. Maybe that's overwriting some of the registers that Menace has set up. Hmm, I don't know if that's the problem. I mean, these two registers can't be having a problem because just not calling this makes means it works. What if we've got a problem with our mod? I need a mod that I know works. What about the PT player is actually used in the Amiga test kit, so I could just download the mod that they're using in that. So this is Amiga test kit. How do I actually just look at the source code without a zip? Oh, spice.mod, that's the one they're using. So I'm going to use that because I know PT player can play this. Well, at least I think it can. So sorry, Burnt Fishy, but you're going to go. This is a 22 kilobyte mod. So yeah, if you're not familiar with the Amiga test kit, it's something you use to test that your hardware is working and it's got a music player in it and it uses this same music player and it's got this mod. Let's try that. I mean, it won't play anyway, but we just want it not to crash. <laughs> That's the main thing here. I, oh yeah, look, it's gone up 180 kilobytes. So let's see if we don't crash. <gasps> we don't crash. Oh, that's interesting. And I have got that spice mod in there. Right. This is exciting. Maybe this will actually make some sound. So going back to the instructions, set the byte variable underscore empty enable to non-zero to start the replay. Clearing it again pauses the song. Uh, okay, that's all we've got to do. So we can start that directly here. Set the byte variable underscore empty enable to non-zero. Can I do this? Um, I 
Oh, I can't do move quick because it, move quick does the entire long word. It's got to be move bite, I think. Start the music. Okay, here we go. Place your bets. Are we... Well, we'll hit symbol to start with. But place your bets. Is this actually going to do anything? Are we going to hear a sound? Ready? No. <laughs> we hear nothing. So we didn't really get anywhere with that. But we didn't crash. That's supposed to be playing music now. So I think I've made some progress in that I've put some code in and it doesn't blow up, but I've not successfully got anything. The question's going to be how am I going to know if it's actually doing anything at all. So I was just having another quick look at this NT install and it does actually say that it needs the A6 register to be the base address of the custom chips, but it also needs A0 to be the vector base register, which I did not set. And also it's got a flag for whether it's PAL or not, which I haven't saved in the startup routine yet. We know this is a PAL set up as Amiga, but you can actually switch it on Kickstart 2 and upwards. You could switch it from between PAL and NTSC. So technically I'm supposed to save that. I'm just going to say it's PAL for now. So actually, there's more to do here. I need to load the vector base register into A0, which where was it stored, my vector base register? SVBR. There it is. That's where I stored it. And what else have we got? D0, I can do a move quick for that. D, I keep typing O instead of zero. D0 is PAL and TSC. And zero is, whoop, zero is NTSC. Okay, I'm not that hopeful about this, but let's Let's assemble that and give it a go. See if I got that right. And yes, that was it. I just didn't read the instructions. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. Yeah, so I, I took the mod file from the Yuga Test because I, I know it works and I know it plays with this player. So yeah, it was all about reading the instructions. I do still have that graphical corruption there. Oh, this is pretty cool. I've got music in the game now. Courtesy of the PT player and the Spice It Up mod by Jester. I think she means by Jester. So... I didn't actually call the cleanup at the end, but it has shut down correctly, so there we go. Oh, it hasn't shut down correctly. It just keeps going. So that's because, yeah, I put a note there. I didn't call empty end and empty remove, so I've, I've exited the game and just left a load of interrupt stuff in there. That's great. Well, this loops forever now. So, um, but that's basically it. I've actually got it to play a mod um, and that's not too bad that is not too bad it's all rtfn if it wants the vector base register you should actually load it so there we go so that cleans up that episode we have got music at least i've got one piece of music that's kind of like assembled right into the executable um, so i don't know what we'll do next time but maybe we'll start putting some sound effects in we should probably try and see if we can get the actual Menace music because I don't have it and maybe we could rip some of the sound effects out of the game. I did try um, this. I did try this sample ripper thing. Uh, no, this Pro Wizard. This is supposed to be able to rip mods out of games and I tried it on Menace and it, it can't do it. But it can do it in Blood Money so maybe we should rip the Blood Money music. But either way, we should probably get a different mod um, and we can use this sample ripper. I'll do this next time and maybe we'll start putting some samples in. But that's really good. I'm quite pleased with that. That is actually quite easy to get going. <laughs> it's started up again. That was actually quite easy to get going. Right, so I've actually I've actually put in the cleanup routines as well now, so 
let's see if this ends. It stops. That's it. We're actually done. I said I wasn't going to do it in, in this video, but I've done it anyway. It stopped. Is it going to stay stopped? I think so. Right. I think we're done. So in the next episode, we'll do something else. But uh, I got music working. It was a bit harder than I thought. But then also, wow, not actually much code to get that PT player to run. That's not bad at all. Right. I will catch you in the next one.